Hi everyone, this is Mrs. Pop. I hope you had a great Easter holiday. Today's Tuesday, and today and the rest of the week, let me tell you what we're going to be doing. Today and tomorrow, we're going to have an aquatic biome review day. Thursday, you're going to be playing a Kahoot game as part of our review. And Friday, we have a science test. The science test on Friday is going to cover saltwater and freshwater biomes. So you're going to need to do two things this week. You're going to need to print off a copy of the Aquatic Biomes Test Review Sheet. And secondly, make sure you have Activity Manual pages 108, 109, 110, and the Review Sheet with you when you watch these daily lesson videos. Okay, for today, we will, number one, review the answers to the Classifying Freshwater Biome Organizer you completed last week. We will also review the answers to the Aquatic Crossword Puzzle. And lastly, we're going to look over the test review sheet and the list of items that I'd like for you to review for the test. All right, my friends, first thing, Classifying Freshwater Organizer. I'm going to pause this video so you can go get your papers and your pencil. Last week we talked about freshwater biomes as either having standing water or moving water. These two pictures here, on the left is a pond and on the right is a lake. They both have standing water. It's not going anywhere and it's not moving constantly. So on your classified organizer here at the top, I've listed four key bullet points for ponds. Ponds have standing water. They're found in both hot and cold climates. They're not as deep as lakes. And plants can grow in ponds as well as at the edge. You may remember the lily pad we talked about that grows could grow in the middle of a pond. All right, let's look at lakes now. Lakes have standing water also. They're found in both hot and cold climates. Lakes are deeper than ponds, and most of the plants will grow at the edge of a lake. The other two types of freshwater biomes are streams and rivers. So streams and rivers have constantly moving water, and gravity is what keeps pulling that water down towards the ocean. So on your organizer, under streams, you could list has moving water, Usually a stream is what we call the headwater of a river and it has clear and quick moving water. River have moving water. The headwater is usually a little stream. Rivers get wider, the water starts moving slower and the water gets warmer as it moves towards the ocean. Now, when it empties into the ocean, the end of that river is called a mouth. Okay, let's move on to our aquatic crossword puzzle. Grab your pencil and let's check your work. Let's look at the words across first. Number one, the question was formed by the limestone skeletons of small animals. That answer was coral reef. We said that corals are live animals. Number three, the beginning of a river is called a headwater. Number six, a wetland with many trees. We just talked about that was swamp. Do you see the picture on the lower right here? That's a swamp and on the left is a marsh. What's the main difference between a swamp and a marsh? I hope you said trees. Swamps have lots of trees. Marshes have very few to little trees. Seven across, the end of a river is called the mouth. Number eight, amount of dissolved salt in the water is referred to as the salinity of the water. Saltwater biomes usually have 3% or more salinity. Freshwater biomes have less than 1% salinity in the water. Number nine across, what's the most common wetland called? It's a marsh. And number 10 across, a wetland that has only fresh water is called a bog. Bogs are found in cooler northern climates and most of the water in bogs comes from rain. That's why bo a bog is always going to have fresh water. 
are questions going down? Number two, the largest marine biome is called the ocean. Number four down, a transition zone between a land biome and a water biome, and this is always wet. I hope you got that one. That's a wetland. Five down, low places along the ocean shoreline exposed by low tides. That's called a tide pool. Here in Florida, we have tide pools. Usually those tide pools will catch hermit crabs, starfish, little tiny fish, anything that's got, gotten caught up in that shallow area that ex exposed along the shoreline. Six down describes water that is not constantly moving. That's called standing water. And number seven down, another name for saltwater biomes, marine. Marine and saltwater biomes can be used simultaneously. Are you guys ready for a quick break? I am. All right, here's a question for you. Who is your favorite character from the movie Finding Nemo? Can you match the character to the name? Here's a list. We've got Peach, Mr. Ray, Crush, Bubbles, Gill, Bloat, Sheldon, and Bruce. I'm not going to tell you. I'm not going to. I want you to have fun matching the name to the character. You may recall when we studied coral reefs last week. The biggest coral reef in the world is the Great Barrier Reef off Australia. That reef supports an amazing diversity of 1,500 species of fish. 30 species of whales and dolphins, and at least 5,000 species of mollusks. Of course, all these animals here from the Finding Nemo movie are also included in that. Okay, let's move right along. Let's get back to our review. Now I'd like for you to pull out the Aquatic Biomes Test Review Sheet, and you may need a piece of paper and pencil to write, take a few notes. Here's what the review sheet looks like. As you review, I want you to consider the following key ideas I've listed here, as well as the textbook pages 160 through 165, and the activity sheets we've used in our study on freshwater and saltwater biomes. So the key ideas, the first one, it's important that you know the difference between a saltwater and freshwater biome because those are the two main categories we've been talking about. The second bullet point says, identify the ocean as the largest marine biome. And it's divided into several zones and four layers. Those zones include tidewaters, coral reefs, and the ocean. Now the ocean layers include four, sunlight, twilight, midnight, and the abyss. Remember this picture I showed you last week? This is the four zones. You don't have to know particular animals found in each zone. I just like to, for you to generally understand there are four layers in the ocean. Another key idea I want you to know is to be able to identify the differences between ponds, lakes, streams, and rivers, because those are all our freshwater biomes and to understand the difference between what a slow moving biome would be or a fresh moving biome would be. You've seen this picture. Standing water you'd find in ponds and lakes, moving water you would find in rivers and streams. It's also important that you be able to identify the differences between marshes, swamps, and bogs. They're all three called wetlands, but how are marshes different from swamps? Marshes have grasses, reeds, and cattails. Swamps have trees. Here's a beautiful picture of the Everglades. How are bogs different from marshes and swamps, though? You probably re recall that bogs can only have fresh water, and that comes mainly from rain. Bogs also have this thing called peat, 
which is that decayed plant matter that piles up in that soggy wet land. The last thing on the review sheet are some vocabulary words to know. We just talked about what peat was. We also talked about what salinity means. So we were talking about what does salinity mean? That's the amount of dissolved salt in the water. Salt water biomes have a higher salinity than fresh water. Third vocab word, wetlands. So that's always areas that's wet. And then the last term is marine biome. Just make sure you know that's just another word for a saltwater biome. Here's your to-do list. You have just watched this lesson video. I hope you've also checked your answers to the activity pages while watching it. If you didn't, you can always go back and watch it a second time. Now here's what I want you to do. I want you to go and complete activity page 110, the study guide page. You can use your book, you can use any of the activity manual pages, 108 or 109, but this is important. You must complete this before you watch tomorrow's lesson video, and you do not have to upload that to Homework Drop. Tomorrow we will be continuing our review, we'll take a look at study guide page 110, and I'll also let you guys go and start playing your uh, a hoot game I prepared for you. Hey, my friends, guess who my favorite character is in the movie? Crush the turtle. I think he's super cool. Here's a video link if you'd like to watch a short snippet of the movie I thought might be fun. All right, you guys, thanks for participating in the review, and I will talk to you tomorrow, Wednesday.